The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Quirky Dog Podcast, inspired by some of the quirkiest dogs you can ever imagine and the owners who love them. This podcast is brought to you by the quirky couple themselves, Scott and Jess Williams. Their aim is to educate and entertain. Here's Scott and Jess. How's it going, guys? We're going to talk about some 4th of July prep for your dog. If you're having a dog that has some noise sensitivity issues, you may want to be proactive in trying to make their holiday a little bit more comfortable. And that is a common thing. Your dog is not alone. We hear often how my dog is so fearful of fireworks and thunderstorms and everything else. So we're here to give you a few tips to make this week and this weekend coming up as seamless as possible for your dog's stress level. But first, we're going to start with the quirky tip of the day. Thank you. And a lot of what we're going to talk about here has to do with noise diffusion and preparation and all of these things with how you can manage your dog to keep the dog more comfortable and not let its fear control itself. And when you're talking about music, I think we've mentioned it maybe in another podcast, but it's not made it to the quirky tip yet. Uh, Classical music and reggae music have been shown through studies to be the most soothing stations for dogs. I don't know why. So when we leave, we got Pandora, Bob Marley on. A lot of people do the classical stations or, you know, a whole symphony CD for the dog. But Sometimes the classical can get a little off the rails yeah. when it gets like the 1812 overture or something. <laughs> it gets a little bit aggressive. But. And, the, and the beat of the reggae and that <clears throat> kind of the soothing thing. But literally, if you're going to leave music on for your dogs, classical and reggae have been shown to actually have the dog's cortisol levels and their stress levels lowering more than other types of music. So even if you like pop or hardcore rock and roll or heavy metal, maybe your dog won't like that as much. Yeah, noise diffusion is a great thing year-round with your dogs if you don't want them getting overexcited when, you know, a serviceman comes to your house or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, we have, um, we'll, we'll start with noise since that was the quirky tip. So we have two of these little machines. This one, we got both of these on Amazon and we have these set up in our house all the time. So this is through a dog's ear. This um, company has made like a lot of CDs and stuff. Yeah, to, I bought the CDs about 10 years ago. Yeah, They've it's been supposed to help while. dogs with the, these calming CDs, everything else. And this one I like because it actually has a little SD card in there. So when you buy this, you can buy like every SD card she sells for 20 bucks, or you can do your own little SD card and just throw it in there, you know, look on Amazon and the sizing and stuff. But um, these are good because they don't have to plug in. So Scott, of course, told me to test these. Well, it's these, rechargeable, which and is I great. Didn't. So well, they don't have to be plugged in. Yeah. It can be remote. So this just went on. So this has... Um, uh, white noise mode, which we like. So here we go. I'm not hearing anything. Just I'll quiet oh. down. It does work. So it has a white noise mode. It's and not then loud enough to. It also to block you it's out right here. Yet. Oh, shut up! And then it has a classical music mode also. So this looks like I'm looks like I'm eating the noise thing. I'm if you're a lot watching, less stressed. Um, no, but this one's great. So this is through a dog's ear. Uh, it was maybe around fifty bucks on Amazon, and of course it doesn't last forever. But you plug it in to its little charger, and then you can use it remotely. So maybe if you're going to a barbecue or something, and if you have your dog with you, and your dog's normally used to hearing other noises, I wouldn't recommend bringing your dog to a barbecue 4th of July, but just in general, you could have this in your car. We can move this all around the house whenever we want. Well, hang on. Before you move over, all right. I want to say also that it? Um, with part of the music things that uh, Through a Dog's Ear specifically sells, they have music to desensitize your dog to fireworks where... There'll be classical music in the foreground and fireworks way in the background. Yeah. And over a series of sessions with your dog, they're bringing the fireworks closer to the forefront. And a lot of breeders will do that with puppies, like to condition dogs to sirens and yeah, kind of, thunder and everything. Babies right. crying, my God. So um, this one, I believe, is called the Pet Tunes, and it's Pet Acoustics, it's called. Um, and How this much is, was this one, by the way? It's about $70, it's like, 50, 50, 60 50, bucks. These are like between 50 and 70 One's a little cheaper. I think this one might be a little cheaper. Now, this one only has the music. So this doesn't have any white noise. Can you hear it? Hopefully. There we go. There's the thing. So this one only has the classical music. It doesn't have the white noise. But to just have these around, keep them charged up and... You know, like if we're going to have guests over or something, I might throw these near a dog's crate that would normally be likely to bark just so things are easier when people come in. Because now I haven't, I don't think we even own a plug-in radio at this point. We used to have radios to yeah, classical everywhere. Yeah, we had AM, everywhere. FM radios that yeah. work great also. But, and, uh, go ahead. Excuse me one sec. Uh, these, you want uh, these back? You gonna well, I'm just saying the volume on these is surprisingly loud. Yeah. Because I also bought a white noise machine 
that would be like sitting outside the door of a therapist's office to, so that you don't hear the person talking about how they had been gone through all this abuse or something. But they don't really have the volume. And these things really crank. They get pretty loud, yeah. so it's to nice. To the point like that if you want to go to bed and it's downstairs, you like want to go turn it off. So these would be um, something to consider. If you have a TV in the room that your dog is in, fine. Put on a music station on the TV. Uh, we, I think we mentioned this before, but just so you're aware, if you leave something on like Animal Planet for your dog, everybody thinks, oh, the dog wants to see other dogs. Well, then the dog can be sound asleep. A dog barks. They wake up. They're barking. Something else. So at least yeah. you know when it's music. You're not going to run into things like animals and fireworks and everything else. So yeah. one of the first big things we would say is noise diffusion. These two products you can find on Amazon. You may even still have time to order it uh, before this weekend or come up with your own noise if diffusion. If you have a $10 clock radio, that'll work fine. You just want to make sure that <laughs> it's true. As long as you get a good signal, the clock radio will work just fine. Just nobody has radios anymore, I feel like. Yeah. So um, we do that all the time. We have the desktop computer playing. We have these guys going. Um, and you may have forgotten this because you probably do know it and forgot about it, but cable TV has all these music stations, so you can put classical right on your TV and yeah. crank it up. Uh, probably even by now, Roku or Hulu or, or uh, Netflix or Hulu or somebody has some sort of music going on too. But that is a big one. And the nice thing about the TV is you can turn that up even louder than maybe is possible. You know, we now, have for many years... With your dog... Make sure that, that the music doesn't have harmonica. Yeah. Oh, my little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. We, we listen to Adam. I'm wearing a shirt, actually, right now. This is so All great. Right, we're going to give so, a, pl a plug to the Adam Ezra group. We, we watch them every night. Listening. He just did 100 gatherings since um, the beginning of quarantine. He's played live on Facebook for 100 nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single night. Um, but we listen to it really every night. We have He's to a catch folk up. musician and he plays guitar and harmonica. Yeah, we have to catch up on one from the other day. But he can play all day long with his guitar. Everything's fine. And then once he does guitar and harmonica, my dog Vital doesn't like the harmonica. She's, she's running she, under the couch. <laughs> she's like, oh my God, the harmonica. So we have to desensitize to our harmonica around here. But um, we have... Literally for many years, this will be the first year in a long time in my life that things haven't been this way. We have fireworks and we have a kennel of dogs in because it's 4th of July and everyone wants to go away to see fireworks or go away for the weekend. And every single year I'm looking on drop cam and whether I have 10 pet dogs there or 15 or three of them, everyone's sleeping, there's music blaring, the air conditioner's going, which is also helping with noise diffusion and dogs are calm during the fireworks show, I'm at the fireworks show looking at everybody, making sure they're chill and everyone's calm through fireworks. So even though they're feeling those booms and hearing something going on, there's enough stimulation within that room that everybody's not freaking out and howling. And knowing me, and Scott knows this, if it was a cluster, we would get in the car and go home and I'd miss fireworks. And I, I really like fireworks. I just put a little Jack Daniels in their water bowl before I leave. <laughs> Tones them right down. <laughs> I don't know if there are fireworks this year, what's going to happen? One sure side note. I'm already hearing them. One of our friends. <laughs> Last night I heard some. Oh, I thought outside. you were joking around that I sound like fireworks. Um, Last night, one of my friends uh, from Maine said, hey, by the way, guys, it hasn't rained since like the beginning of May, so be careful with fireworks this year, and it is true. It's been a dry one. And I mentioned this for the pet dogs, but on top of those noise machines and noise diffusion with music, if you have fans or you have air conditioners in that room, get those up too, because the noise of all of that, the crazier the better. The more that the dog has to hear and uh, take its thoughts off of fireworks and not hear fireworks right away, the easier it'll be. And fireworks are a little different than a thunderstorm because, and you guys don't really have thunderstorms in New England. You're not like the Midwest. The Midwest is boom, boom, bang, bang, crazy. We, we might get one a year or something, yeah. one or two a year. Um, but thunderstorms, the barometric pressure drops, like the dog can prep for it. You know what I mean? There's wind, there's stress going on there. Fireworks, everyone's just sitting around and then they come out of nowhere. So if it's your town is scheduled to have them or your neighbor's setting them off or they're having a little get together, hopefully socially distancing and friends and family or whatever, then you know, prep your dog before the fireworks are going to begin so you're not in the middle of it now trying to implement all these methods. So noise diffusion is a big one. Um, we have a few others for you, but do you have any thoughts about noise diffusion? Because I don't want well, to cut you off. I know there's several different ways to approach it. I think noise diffusion is probably the best, the best one because, you know, a lot of people medicate, they go to the vet, they get medication, they give it to their dog. And um, a lot of times that medication makes the dog physically number, but mentally they're still sharp so they're still just as stressed they're just not moving because they're sluggish because they, they got this like body buzz from these medications yeah and there are 100 percent some dogs that maybe that route will work for you but there's a lot of ways that you can um help a dog through this without having to 
introduce a pharmaceutical. Well, let me put it this way. I would use the music in conjunction with whatever else you're doing. Yeah, and you say that music is our A number one. I wouldn't. I would say the A number one thing for a dog with fear, especially as it relates to noise sensitivity and fireworks, is limiting their movement. So if your dog now hears fireworks and it's running from the back door to the bedroom to the you know, it's funny because I, I just think about the dog being in a crate as a given, and I of know course. most people don't. Yeah, have the dogs our dogs in a crate. are. Yeah, so if you're limiting the movement of how your dog can respond to the fireworks, that is going to help them a lot because as soon as their fear starts physically controlling them, they can get more and more and more fearful. So. If they have free reign of the house, maybe give them a room. If they normally have a room, maybe give them a bathroom. If they're comfortable being in a crate, if they've ever been crated before, use a crate. And everybody feels like, oh, it's cruel to put him in a crate. He's scared. Well, no, he has his own little area to sit and deal with it. And you can set up this little fortress around him with noise and air conditioning and everything else to make the dog feel a little bit more comfortable. Stepping on the leash is another one. You know, if it's going to be fireworks time, let the dog have a leash and drag it around the house. And then when you hear that first boom... Take the leash, put it under your foot, step on the leash, and leave the dog alone. Don't pet the dog the whole time while it's shaking and tremoring and salivating and freaking out. Just let the dog be at your feet and limit its movement. Because as soon as, it's like if you guys know Temple Grandin, how she had her squeeze machine. As soon as you limit a dog's movement. Who the hell is Temple Grandin? Oh, shut up. You know that you know all about her. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with her, check it out. She's done a lot for the animal industry. She is an autistic um, She's professor like, she's and like an, she she's like an animal savant she yeah she really is she totally like rerouted how the cows will go to slaughter and it, she's just awesome but uh she made herself a squeeze machine because it feels good to be in a tight space the pig today is sporting his fake thunder shirt I, apparently there is scientific proof that the thunder shirts help and we're not anti that like if you want to try that 100 percent, the only thing about that is if your dog's going to rip it off and chew it up and swallow it you might be sol and that'll be a problem but um, try the thunder shirt if you can watch your dog and everything else, but the squeezing, you're limiting the access to everything. You know what I mean? If you're going to go in for some sort of meditation or something, you're <clears> normally <throat> going into like a nice little upstairs attic, like somewhere that's a small little sanctuary, but it's not, you know, everywhere, you know, what? it's not your whole house. I have a little side note, a little okay, side go ahead. story about squeezing. Oh boy. This so, could really go either way, and I hope it doesn't head to when pimples. When I was a young boy, and of course, you know, I, I was abused. <laughs> that wasn't a good I, way I to start. I was abused like every other kid in that the 60s. That wasn't a good way to start that story off. <laughs> but I used to have uh, this real heavy old uh, comforter oh, quilt. Oh, my uh, God, the heavy blanket. So Here we go. I had this heavy quilt. Oh, my God. And I used God. to love having this heavy quilt on me in the winter. There's something about it that Just made so me you feel know. good. Yeah. So then in my adult life, when finally I was at a point in my life where I'm financially stable enough to say, I think I'll buy a quilt, you know, like, you know, that's not so extravagant. And we hunted for probably two or three years for a heavy quilt. Oh my God. Like, we'd go to North Conway. It's a quilt shop. Quilts. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. no they, they do make, they make heavy yeah, blankets. They make for, heavy for crazy blankets. People. Exactly. That, I found don't out about say that it. Later. Don't say it like that, but this is a thing for if, children with Asperger's and autism and, um, you know, adults on the spectrum. They make a weighted blanket to make you feel better. So uh, I went, it was a $300 Christmas gift, right? So I had to get the queen size. Saying it raise the price. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you. I can't even believe you brought up heavy blanket. I'm getting so impassioned talking about it. So it's a $300 blanket. It is so heavy. I'm like the that, personification of the dog that needs yeah, yeah. Uh, a thunder shirt. Yeah. So it's so heavy. Like if you're literally coming back from going to the bathroom, like it's almost a workout. And then when our little terrier was alive, she's like 20 pounds. We're like, what if the thing fell off and landed on her? Like it could be, a, it could injure her. Now in the defense of the heavy blanket, <laughs> they come in a few different weights. Yeah. Jess got the heaviest one. That was it what was, was little, recommended. Was I guess normally when you're Once 220 you the, when and the almost 60, you, you yeah. don't buy them. So. You're, you're, Whatever. You're pinned to the friggin' so, bed for the rest of the night. The heavy if you have blanket. To pee, you're in trouble. <laughs> this is really turning into a heavy blanket episode <laughs> instead of noise sensitivity. We're gonna I get back to fireworks after break. But the heavy blanket now, what it does is when the power goes out, we get the heavy blanket out to keep us warm, and that's literally the only use for it. And with a friggin' heavy blanket. So yes, thunder shirts, squeeze machines, heavy <clears> blankets, <throat> limiting movement, all important things. When we get back from break, we're gonna talk about some more tips to help your dogs well, this week and this quick, weekend. Quick we don't have time. From Happy Howards. <laughs> Lord, help me.
Happy Howie's all-natural dog treats are made with real slow-cooked beef, lamb, and turkey. Choose from deli-style sausages, wolf sticks, jerky, burger treats, and our soft meat roll treats. All of our treats are available in bulk or in convenient resealable packages. And dogs just love Happy Howie's. They are made in the USA and available at thousands of retailers nationwide and online at happyhowies.com. Try Happy Howie's today and save 10% with promo code QUIRKY10. Happy Howie's. We're making it real. Oh, I was going to say, are we on yet? Happy Howie's is a good food to give the dog when they're feeling if that you can is get true. them eating treats that is give true. them the happy howies while those and fireworks they, are going and happy howies there is a very tasty dog treat if you haven't tried it yet so um one thing uh we're gonna do the quirky question of the day first let's get that <laughs> done and over with did i take away your job go ahead the yeah. quirky question of the day <laughs> all right is actually from uh, a girl that i used to go to high school with she um what wrote us What's kelly oh kelly from illinois ah you yes. two went out on the on the in the clubs all the time right well, this is a different Kelly. This oh, is a high school, not remember, a college Kelly. But the other um, Kelly. Kelly, anyway, uh, wrote me and said that her dad got a dog and it's been going okay and everything else, but the dog just runs away every chance it gets. Um, and why is this and what can you do about it? So uh, last week was kind of an anxiety setup too with the dog drinking too much water. And really, I would just say 100% dogs that exhibit this behavior, they seem okay, they seem chill, everything's fine. And then when there's a way to escape, they just want to go. It normally stems from a place of anxiety. And the first thing I wrote her and I said was, hey, is your dad using a crate? Because to me, that's a good way to start to get on top of the anxiety. So even if your dog doesn't seem batshit and follows you around from room to room and you know can't ever be in a crate or anything else, if it sees a way to escape and it just wants to go, that's normally a sign that you have some anxiety. So you could train uh, like a border at the door, like the dog's not going to cross the barrier until you release it. You should definitely... Uh, hook up with a trainer in person and get a strong recall on your dog. So if the dog does shoot out the door, you can call the dog back. You always say to practice the recall to the door. Yeah, I would never, you know, track, uh, practice having the dog coming back to you from the front door, like to, from the sidewalk to the front door, that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's getting used to those reps, getting food when it comes back. But um, really, more often than not, guys, that is like a telltale sign that the dog has anxiety. Yes, there are dogs like huskies and everything else that maybe are a little more obstinate to teach a recall to. Shiba Inus are very independent sometimes they just want to go off and do their own thing but if the dog is escaping and just like ah there's an opening i gotta go that's normally just their brain and their lack of stability telling them i gotta get out of here and it stems from anxiety and you want to first of all fix that at the very base first well and the dogs the dogs that run away aimlessly that's typically an anxiety yeah. thing if they're running over to visit the neighbor and get treats yeah that's you know, not that's the same thing we're yeah. talking about they don't know why they just got to get out the door they got to go they're just do it quickly they do it every time so Keep and that door as safe. Far as, as far protect as the them. Shiba Inu goes, they're just you know they're smart enough to know that you suck, <laughs> so they're leaving. They're more like a cat. Anybody yeah. that wants a dog that doesn't really want to deal with a dog, get a Shiba Inu. Okay, so um, we talked about I love Shibas, by the way. <laughs> we talked I about do. noise, and he does. He likes an independent dog. We talked about noise and um, limiting movement and thunder shirts and everything else. Another thing that you can think about doing, especially with puppies. Um, is give the dog something good to try to taste and to eat during the fireworks. So, you know, you can get a big marrow bone from the butcher, um, bully sticks fill if your dog con- doesn't. Fill a Kong with something. Yeah, fill a Kong with something, freeze it. But get the dog busy and occupied with something. Maybe skip dinner that night so the calories and all the yummies are coming from um, this special treat that they never get. And just not so much that, oh, the fireworks started and now all of a sudden bones come out. And if your dog still goes for bones at that point, great, but start the evening that way. So give them something special to busy themselves with. Yeah. Those of you that are lucky enough to have fireworks every weekend, <laughs> Jess and I, we had our training facility in Salisbury, Mass, and they had fireworks every single weekend yeah. for like two months yeah. all through the summer. So it was a good time to work on that kind of stuff. but And I used to tour around all the time at fairs and theme parks. So every time we went to a fair, there'd be some sort of fireworks. I mean, I know that's like not a thing anymore to have state fairs or county fairs. But at some point when we get back to that, mm. we would be on the property, living on the property. Fireworks would go out. We'd go out, train our dogs, get Frisbees out. Like it just was a way of life. So you want to get the dogs so they're pairing the scary noise with something they like to if they can participate in that behavior. And this gets into... All right, so something my dog likes. Well, something my dog likes is attention and affection and everything else. And guys, we get that. And, 
you know, Scott hurt his back a couple years ago now. He herniated a disc. It was terrible, She of didn't course. give me any attention. Oh, shut I up. I was laid up for months. It was literally every moment of our lives was consumed by Scott and how to get him from room to room. But anyway, of course I cared about him. I felt bad for him. I wanted to help him. When we feel bad for something else, we want to pour our hearts out and help uh, this other being and make this person or this dog or whomever feel better. If your dog is exhibiting fear and you want to start making them feel better, there's a lot of people out there that will say that you can't reinforce fear. And I brought this up in a training group a few weeks ago. And the reason I think that's an she's argument... Been, she's been banned from every training oh, group on Facebook, up. by the way. I'm very diplomatic on Facebook. But the reason that is an argument, which seems to be the case here, is that people will say, well, what are you going to do with fear otherwise? You're going to flood it and you're going to punish it. Like, those are your other two options. Well, no, you can also ignore fear. If the kid falls down all the time just to make a big scene out of, oh, I fell down, I have a boo-boo, and every time you rush over and, oh, let's go see the Band-Aids and let's do boo-boo kisses and everything else, and that becomes the routine, then all of a sudden you have a kid being able to get your attention at any given point in time. Mm. And I'm not saying the kid didn't <clears throat> skin his knee, and I'm not saying the dog isn't scared, but the way that you respond to that has, yeah. uh, can have a very positive or negative impact on how the dog proceeds forward. Yeah, my dad said, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. That worked <laughs> really quick. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. Give you something to squeeze. So um, the thing about this situation, guys, is that I guess people say this because uh, the, my point, my you, you big hold really, up. You seem really passionate about well, this. Well, I am, and I'm trying, trying not to, to get too down a rabbit hole here. But my point is, how do we measure fear with a dog? Like, is it through cortisol levels? Is it through this, that, and the other thing? Fine. Then that has to be studied. Did I pet the dog and all of a sudden the fear response was less? What happens if you ignore the dog? Frequently, if the dog's freaking out about something and you're just like, it's fine, don't even think about it and give them something to do, put them in a crate, step on the leash, something else, it goes away quickly. You don't want to make a problem where there isn't one. So that's where I stand on that one. Yeah, if and your I dog say, is a trembling mess, you can make it worse by just petting it through that trembling mess and coddling it the whole time. Yeah, I'm not nearly as passionate about this subject as Jess, but I do agree with her. <laughs> And we just had a dog in a few weeks back that was on, what was that drug the dog was on? Trazodone. Trazodone, which is a pretty heavy-duty drug, and it had been on it for a long time for anxiety and all kinds of problems. And uh, I took the dog in for boarding and training, and I asked them to talk with their vet, taper the dog off of all medication before I take the dog so I can see what the dog is really like. And the dog did great. I mean, it was, it was just such a testament to how you handle a dog can really play a major role in how they are emotionally as far as fear yeah. and anxiety and stability. And uh, fortunately, with some changes in the way those owners are handling the dog now, the dog has maintained a somewhat stable temperament without the medication at home, which yeah. has been really nice. And animals feed off of other animals and, you know, us humans and energy and everything else. So one, like, huge thing, guys, is if you have a dog, an adult dog that's fearful of fireworks, and you introduce a young dog into that house, you need to do everything in your power to make sure that younger dog is separate from that dog that has been rehearsing the same fear and the same concern for years and years and years, because literally it will happen so quickly that this puppy was totally fine, bomb-proof, there was no problem, saw the other dog scared maybe twice, and now the other dog acts the same way. You know what I mean? They always will go to that least common denominator. And the same thing if we're stressed. If I'm like, it's going to be okay, everything's going to be okay, mommy loves you, and you're projecting that onto the dog, the dog's like, holy shit, like maybe the world is going to end here. Like maybe this isn't a firework, maybe we have a bomb, like who knows what's up. And really, and Scott says this a lot, and it's true, we never know what the dogs are thinking. Like, we don't know if they're thinking, oh, this is the scariest thing in the world. The world's going to end. We don't know if they're thinking, you know, somebody's knocking at the door. They're not answering it. You, you don't know. You, we can't ask the dogs where their thoughts are. What we need to do is control their behavior and control their response to things. And if you just set them up so they can't unravel like they're used to, like say their go-to is now they run to the bathroom and they pee on the bed and everything else, then set them up in the bathroom to begin with where they can't go to the bed to urinate or Put them on a leash before it starts so you can just calmly step on well, it. If pick, they Pick up throw rugs. If yes. If they have a tendency to go on a throw yes. rug. Yes, and if they are going to just run and you don't want them to rehearse that fear and you want to see how the dog does just hanging out, then keep them on a leash and see what they do when they're just near you in the same room. Observe behavior. And really, if you have not tried it, <clears throat> put your dog in a crate. You can FaceTime the iPad and hold your phone and see what the dog looks like, but see what the dog looks like in a crate. The less room it has and the less options it has, the more it's just like, okay, I'm just going to hunker down and hopefully this fireworks show is over with soon. Yeah. And I realize, you know, this is not easy stuff we're talking about. It's incredibly simple, 
but when you have an emotional attachment to an animal, it's just so heartbreaking to see your dog upset, and uh, it, it's really hard to um, take a clinical approach to a dog that you're, or a cat that you're very emotionally attached to, because quite often that dog is giving you a lot of emotional uh, relief too, mm -hmm. you know? So it's tough, but if you can possibly do it uh, for the good of the dog, then step up and don't be a baby and make it happen. Yeah. And I don't know, again, what's happening with fireworks, depending on what city you're in or anything else. But just as a general rule, guys, I wouldn't bring dogs to a fireworks show. I wouldn't bring dogs to a parade where there's these really loud noises, even if they're fine and the dog is totally chill about it, unless they're deaf, which even when they're deaf, they're still feeling vibrations. That's a lot of sensory input for a dog. Their audible ability is much better than ours. That's a lot I, of loud noise for them. What I would say is if you're going to bring your dog to an event, whether it's fireworks or it's a big you know, public barbecue with fireworks coming that evening or even a bandstand with music, all the things that happen around the 4th of July, if you're going to bring your dog... Be prepared to leave at any time. You're there yes. for your dog. You're not there for your family and with the dog in tow. Because I have seen so many situations that just sucked where the dog was just so petrified. And the people were oblivious to it. They weren't even looking at yeah. their dog. And the dog's cowering under the chair. And just because your dog can fit in a bag doesn't mean it's happy being in a bag or being in your arms. Just because it's small and it is contained next to you doesn't mean it's enjoying itself. It's like a, these parades, Fourth of July parade. You might get eight or ten floats and kids well, go we by. we don't have parades anymore, so it fairly, won't be a problem Fairly this quiet. Year. And then all of a sudden, the high school marching band comes by. And it's like the drum corps going crazy. And the dog's just like freaking out, you know? But really, this stuff with how you respond has a bigger impact than people realize. And as another side note, if your dog is outside and your dog has a lot of fear and it has a yard, maybe put them on a long line or put them on a leash because that's another thing that happens is now dogs are escaping. They're afraid. They're outside. They can't get inside. Maybe they slip under the gate. Maybe somebody left the gate open because you're having people over for the 4th of July. Like, Don't allow your dog now to be in a situation where they don't even feel safe within the house something happens and they're trying to get out of the yard because you can lose a dog too. There's a lot of dogs that get loose oh, during dogs this 4th yeah, of July season. Get picked up by animal control over the holidays when there's 4th of, you know, fireworks and all that yeah. stuff. So we want you guys to have a great, happy, healthy, safe 4th of July with your family, maybe some friends and of course your dogs, but set your dogs up for success. And if every year before this 4th of July has sucked, for your dog, try to do something different this year. If you need some more tips, or you have any questions to clarify about anything that we talked about here today, you can email us at studio at the quirky dog.com. I would check out the Adam Ezra group on Facebook. They're actually going live at an outdoor show on the 4th of July, the Tupelo Music Hall. Up Tupelo in Music Hall. Tupelo, yeah, that's how you what say it. Up in Derry, you know? New Hampshire. Yeah. They're doing an outdoor like drive in show, but it's yeah. still going to be live on his gathering series. But check it out, guys. This guy has been on Facebook every day for 100 days, and he's one of our favorite bands anyway. So we wish you the best. Um, go America. We're feeling very patriotic this year. Have a happy 4th of July. Be safe. Don't blow your hand off. Definitely. And keep it quirky. Where's our pig? <laughs> Bye, guys. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.